That is a lovely shot. That's six. Situation. anywhere near the pad. The ball is very close to the bat. Hi everyone and welcome back to My Cricket Gear. So for season one of our reviews, uh, we looked at upwards of 60 bats. Um, you'll see in the video here some of the um, bats that we did um, have that we tested and reviewed. Um, so I guess based on that we've uh, been able to see lots of different brands and get an idea of who's doing what um, and sort of pick out some of our major gripes for bats that we've found. So today's uh, episode um, we're going to be looking at one specific aspect and that is the narrowing of bats. So you could almost say this particular topic is a passion uh, of mine because on a lot of the forums that I've been discussing with people it's something that I kick off about uh, quite a lot. I really don't like it uh, and today I'm basically going to go through uh, why that is the case. So um, yeah have a look through the video and see what you think and um, certainly you know post a comment to let me know whether you agree or disagree or maybe you know you can give your your detailed opinion um, as to um, how it should be taken into account because for me personally it's something that I really don't like. Okay so to start off with the uh, technical aspects first um, obviously everybody knows or I guess most people especially if you're bat badgers will know that 40 mil on the edge is the maximum height um, and in terms of the spine the maximum height for that is 67 mils uh, but one thing that the MCC Law 5 also details is the maximum width of a bat which is a hundred and eight mil. So um, hundred and eight mil um, is the maximum, but for me that is the default. And certainly for bat makers in the UK, that is their objective. Their objective is to hit a hundred and eight mils. Sometimes they might be slightly over, um, but the bat gauges, uh, the, the popular ones that you see in white from, from Gun & More are actually 110 mil. I think they allow for one mil on each side of the bat for edge tape and scuff sheet. So any sort of bat repairs there. So there's a little bit of flexibility, but 108 is what is uh, set in MCC Law 5. Um, and so in the UK, if it ever dips under 108, you know, something around 107, um, it is a slight variance, but certainly it isn't the intention of a bat maker in the UK to, to do that. Now, I don't know about uh, Australia so much, but we do have a bat that I'll show you from Australia and, and, and you know, you'll, you'll see the result of that particular one. Um, but certainly for the UK, I haven't come across a bat maker that isn't trying to make the width of the bat both at the front and the back 108 mil. Okay, so the first photo that's come up, um, this was made in Australia, so not a UK made bat, but fine for the example here. Uh, Grey Nichols, uh, made by Stuart Kranzbuehler, um, pretty much bang on the measurements. It's, I think it's 107.3 is the width of the bat at the face. Uh, and then it's about about the same actually at the back. I think it's one oh seven point two, um, fractionally less um, at the back. But for all intents and purposes, it's the same width at the front and the back. Um, and you can see how it fills up the gauge. I've pushed the gauge slightly to one side so you can see the maximum gap because uh, obviously you can't see the other side of the gauge. Um, and it's it's tiny. You know, it it gives that that two mil allowance, uh, which is for the edge tape and the scuff sheet. And in, in fact, this bat doesn't have any edge tape or scuff sheet on it. Um, so with scuff sheet and edge tape, it would probably pretty much be filling um, that gauge there. Um, and that's what we expect to see. I mean, you do get them dropping down to 107 sometimes. Um, I spoke to James Laver from Laver and Wood, um, and he did say, you know, occasionally they'll, they will go down, but the objective for for them when they're making a bat is 108. Um, so, yeah, plus minus one mil, um, I think, is an acceptable tolerance. Okay, so you can see with the second bat, uh, not naming names, but you can obviously work out which brand it is from... Uh, 
looking at the back of the bat there. Um, so this bat was made in India, and you can see clearly that the width uh, is a lot less than the previous bat that I showed you significantly. Obviously, it's close up, and when you're looking at the bat, um, you know, front on, um, unless you see a lot of bats, you may not be able to tell, or if all the bats that you have are narrow, then you wouldn't be able to tell. But clearly, using the gauge, it's a lot narrower so that's something that we see here in this second photo. So now I'm going to show you a chart that's taken from the Laver and Wood website. Um, there isn't a definitive measurement for widths for the other sizes, just that the maximum width uh, needs to be 108 mil. Um, but we've used the chart that Laver and Wood have. Laver and Wood, very respected uh, company. Um, I think one of the, for me, one of my favourite bat makers, and certainly for a lot of us uh, cricket badgers, um, I think we all aspire to own at least one laver in wood. Um, so yeah, you're looking at the widths there, all the adult size bats, 108 width, if you see the harrow size bat, it's 105 mil, and then a size 6 is 102 mil. So measuring that last bat that I showed you, which had the sort of big gap there, um, the face width will fluctuate as you go up and down the bat, so they're, um, depending on the process that you use as a manufacturer, that can vary if you're doing it by hand or if you're using a machine um, to, to, to get the, the width correct. Um, also, when you cut the uh, splice into the handle, where you're going to put the handle into the bat, it'll actually push the wood apart sometimes if that cut is not exact so you might sometimes find that it's slightly wider um, around the handle area um, now in the case of that particular bat that we measured the second one um, it did have a fluctuating width at its widest point it was 104.4 and at its narrowest point it was 103.2 so 103.2 when the maximum width or what I'd say should be the standard width of a men's bat is 108, is um, basically half a centimetre less on the face, um, which I think is a significant number. And we will go into more detail as to how significant that number is and how it could impact you. Um, but yeah, it's a lot narrower than pretty much all the UK-made bats that I have seen. Um, also, um, it's narrower than what Laver and Wood have on their charts for a Harrow bat, which is a junior bat. It's pretty much approaching the 102 mils that you'll find on a size 6 junior bat. So, it's not just peculiar, it, it, I would say it's incredibly frustrating um, because people are so focused on that size of the edge, size of the spine, they don't really think about the width that the bat is. A lot of people uh, may just assume that it's the right width. Um, they may not actually know the number is 108 mil. Um, some people have said to me they don't care. It helps with their bat speed or whatever reason there is. Um, that they want to give but for me from a bat making standpoint it's not really acceptable I really do think you're being scammed and ripped off um, because you are buying an adult bat not a junior bat um, adult bats you know need to have the correct width a junior bat you can make them smaller because they are for smaller players they are for for children they're for juniors um, I guess the, the, the in-between a size is probably what GM do, which is the academy size, which is as, uh, I think it's as long as an adult bat, but it's as wide as a harrow bat, which is pretty much what you're getting with so many of these um, Asian-made bats. Um, now, if I look at something like the Grey Nichols Legend bat, retail prices I think it might even be a grand but it's around £800 is what I've seen most retailers selling the adult bat for but the junior bat the harrow bat you can get it for £299 so it's a £500 saving um, now it might have a H sticker on the top of the handle 
Um, but for all intents and purposes, how is that Harrow size legend bat that different from a lot of these adult bats that you're paying a hell of a lot more money for? So from a money standpoint, I don't see how they can justify charging you so much more money when they're giving you less of the product than they were supposed to be giving you. Okay, so we've talked about how um, I feel like um, the Asian bats, a lot of the Asian bats that I've been seeing recently um, have been narrow um, and seem to be getting narrower um, when comparing to the bats, at least the small sample that I've had from Australia and New Zealand um, and all the bats that I've basically seen that are made in the UK. Um, but the question is, you know, what is the edge? I mean, if you have a look at your bat right now, where does the edge end? Because we obviously know where the edge starts, but how far in is it from in the bat before it's no longer the edge? So I've asked a few people. Um, some people said to me um, something around one centimeter in. Anything in that area, they would say is the edge. Um, someone said uh, one and a half centimetres, uh, someone said 22 mil, they were very precise with that measurement. Um, so I thought that the easiest thing to do is probably get a ball and put it up against the bat and see where the edge is and where it's not. I think the key measurement here is the actual, that, that centre bit where the actual seam is on the bat. Um, and it's sort of deciding how much of that seam is touching the face of the bat. Because anything l less than that, if none of the seam is touching the bat, as far as I'm concerned, that's definite edge. Um, but after that, it becomes a bit more subjective. So I bounced a few balls on there, moved it across. And the decision I came to was that once the centre part of the seam, so the bit that has the, the raised bit in the middle... Um, touches the face then for me that would be an acceptable um, point to decide that that is where the edge stops so um, I took a few balls uh, measured the diameter uh, of the ball from side to side it isn't in the MCC laws um, they only mention the circumference so the diameters may vary on um, different balls um, so it, just based on the three that I took, the average was around 72 uh, mils in diameter. So 72 mils, and then if I halve that number, then that gives me 36 mil. So I'm actually, based on my calculations and taking an actual ball and putting it up against the, the bat, saying that you need to move in from the start of the edge by 36 mil before it's no longer the edge which is a lot larger than any of the numbers that anybody else had given um, and uh, you know for myself originally I thought mm, maybe around that you know, somewhere in the one to two centimeters but when taking a ball putting it up against it um, that's the outcome that I've come to. And, you know, if we have a look through, uh, you can have a look through the photos and decide where you think the edge is. I mean, I know where the middle is and I know where the edge starts, but where does the edge end? So that's the measurement that I'm taking, 36 mil. Now that's on one side, which means on the other side, 36 mil again, gives you a total of 72 mil. <laughs> so that's 72 mil i ripped out of a bat now, which is only 108 mils in width total. That leaves me with 36 mils to play with uh, in terms of pure hitting area there. It's not that big then. Um, I keep looking through and I keep thinking it can't be that number because that's way too far into the bat. Um... But because of the shape of the bat and where the, you know, sorry, the shape of the bat, the shape of the ball, um, we don't count the bit that's not the seam. You know, if it hits the bat without the seam touching it there, the actual seam, then that's a nick. There's not enough of the ball um, there, I think, uh, in order to for you to hit it flush. Uh, obviously, there are other things to take into account as well. There's uh, whether it's a flat face or a round face. Um, 
I don't really want to get into that because then we'll have multiple measurements. But I'm trying to be, uh, you know, play a little bit in terms of devil's advocate, but just to give you an idea of how bad it could be for you. Um, but you're left with 36 mils on a bat. Now, that means those 36 mils that you can hit in become very precious. If you were to take away half a centimetre from it, that leaves you with 31 mils. Now, my crude guessing is, is that if you go from, what, 36, taking five from it, you're looking about, what, 12, 13%? less hitting area um so how is that acceptable so people who are telling me yeah a bit of narrowing is not really an issue in terms of usable space on a bat that's massive and people who say they don't care well why don't you get one of those middling bats because they're super narrow and if you would you be happy taking one of those little narrow middling bats out and using that as your match bat well why wouldn't you be oh it's because you're basically making the playing area smaller and smaller on the bat so as a batsman i want to maximize that as much as is legal i don't want to minimize that size um you know i i want to increase the size if possible uh so when you talk about usable area and then you're losing half a centimetre, you're not losing half a centimetre from 108 mil. You're losing it from the hitting area because the edge is always going to be the same size. Even if the bat was a 50 mil wide bat, the edge size would still be the same size. That doesn't change. It's only the hitting area, the middle part um, that matters. So that's why... I guess I'm really passionate about it and I think it's a real shame that companies think that they can do this and get away with it and in a lot of cases they are um, they're doing it without um, I guess consideration for the consumer and what they actually need I mean to take a leaf out of what Obama said in 2008 when we talked when he talked about the market and the crash there are three sides to blame you can blame the manufacturers <laughs> Uh, for producing bats that are that narrow you can blame the retailers who are trying to chase the specs in the other area a la your 40 mil your 67 mil your full shape um, but we ourselves also should then take some blame as well because um, we you know the specs are there available for us to check but we're not checking them it's not something that we focus on and I do think it's something we should pay a lot more attention to and push back onto manufacturers to make sure they're making them um, to the right sizes. Now, this is an attack on Indian or Pakistani bat makers because I've had bats from those countries which have the correct widths. Um, it's just the case that it seems to be happening a lot more often. And recently, I've had a chance to look at a lot of Indian made bats, and a hell of a lot of them are narrow. And moving on to the next topic now about narrowing at the back, it's even worse at the back. So this is the Aiden Markram that I got recently. Um, and I thought I'd use this as an example when we talk about narrowing at the back to compare to the next bat that I'll show you. Um, but this particular one, 108.1 um, at its widest point on the face and I think 107.9. So pretty much bang on 108 all the way through. And then to make it a little bit easier to see, uh, I've got the photo again with the gauge and you see how it fills up the gauge. And you see it's pretty much a straight line um, at the front and at the back. Now if we compare it to the next bat that I'm going to show you, um, this one here you can see it's wider at the front than it is at the back. But it's not that clear, so again I'll put the gauge on it for you to have a look at. And you can see clearly the width at the front versus the width at the back so the width at the front uh, is 107 the width at the back is 103 now asian companies that i've seen seem to be doing this more and more um, where not only are they narrowing it they're narrowing it more at the back because when you look at the face of the bat if the bat was that narrow if it was 103 102 at the front it would look odd 
but they can get away with narrowing the back more because you're looking at the front and not looking at the back. Now, some people might think, um, you know, what what's the issue here? And, f and for me, it's a little bit, um, how can I say? I, I feel like inherently you, you are making the bat slightly weaker by not actually having all that wood behind it in a straight line and if you hit the ball at a certain angle you're more likely to to do some damage to your bat so I don't think that's a good thing to begin with but um, you know I don't think it's a major issue but it is a slight concern for me um, but the big problem that I have with this and I guess people don't really think about it other than uh, people who really really get quite anal about this stuff like myself um, is that when you measure the bat it looks like it's 40 mil because it's dipping in the line between the front and the back is now longer it's not a straight line um, directly from back to front it's going um, at an angle so if you think of doing a Pythagoras theorem on it you know that's um, c squared um, and it's going from 107 to 103. Um, and so when I've done a few calculations and worked that out, I think you, you're probably looking at like half a mil, which isn't admittedly a huge amount, um, but suddenly your 40 mil is now actually 39 and a half because of the way that you measured it. Um, and some companies have been a lot more dramatic than that. I've seen bats where the back is as narrow on top end players bats have been as narrow as 98.9 mil so that's 0 0.9 centimeters uh, at the back that's a huge amount of wood that they've taken out which is great for them they've saved lots of weight for you um, but when you measure it you are actually getting um, 30 I don't know, 38.8 mil maybe? You're not getting 40 mil. You're not getting your 41 mil. So it's a genuine trick in order to make that measurement longer. And it's kind of funny sometimes when you see those bats because you try and put them on a table on the side and they always seem to fall over. They don't stay up straight because of the, the slant in the angle. Um, so yeah, that's an, you know that's something that they're trying to sell you the idea that it's a 40 mil bat on the edge but it's not really they've just done it in a way that means when you measure it it always looks like it's 40 mil um so anything to you know uh get that measurement and hit that number um the other thing is is that by narrowing the bat completely you can take if you you have a bat in your kit bag and it's 35 mil i guarantee you if you narrowed that bat if you stick it on the machine and you cut the edges in far enough you'll get 40 mil on the edge but now the bat's a lot lot narrower so my example that i have here is one of those middling bats as i show you um, and it actually has a 50 mil edge but look how f how much wood you have to lose on the edge in order to get to 50 mil and so as far as i'm concerned they're just going to keep taking the wood in until they get to that magic number for you and if you are blinkered enough, um, then all you're going to be looking for is 40 mil um, without checking the actual width, um, which I kind of think is crazy. Um, they are taking that wood off and they are putting it onto the back of the bat so you can get that um, convex shape, dome shape. Uh, which is very desired, or at least uh, a full profile. So it's a full shape, no wood taken off um, at the back, no concaving there. Um, but that's where that wood is, you know, is gained, it's coming from. The reason why, um, you know, a lot of those guys on TV, the top end pros, can get wide bats and have all that wood behind it is because the wood is very light. And that means the wood is very rare because it's rare. They are that light uh, with a decent amount of moisture in it. If you dried a bat down to 2% moisture, sure, you could have a super light big bat, but it'll probably explode after three balls. Um, so that moisture content needs to be around the, the 10 to 12%, I think. Um, and that's, you know, that, that's 
what all the bat manufacturers are sort of chasing. They're trying to find those light pieces of wood, and there just aren't enough of them. So instead, it seems like they're cutting as many corners as possible in order to get you a bat that looks like what you see on TV. Now, I wouldn't say that every single pro's bats uh, have the correct 108 mil width. I heard Bearstow was furious when he found out uh, one of his previous sponsors um, had supplied him with a narrow bat. And I think the phone conversation went something along the lines of, you've basically sent me kids' bats to use. Um, so I'm not sure necessarily that all the pros themselves measure it. But you can't compare yourself to a pro unless you are listening and, and a professional cricketer. Um they have better hand-eye coordination. They're a lot more skilled than, than than I am. So they are much more likely to hit the middle of the bat. I am much more likely to hit the edge of the bat. So um, I need that playing area to be as wide as possible to give me the best chance of hitting it. Um, so I don't think people um, realise uh, that this is going on. I don't know in the future whether UK manufacturers are also going to copy this method in order to make those bats look bigger than they actually are um, but for me width is so important I don't want to go and bat out in the middle with a narrow bat I want to use a full width bat to give me the full chance of hitting it out of the middle um, so I think people shouldn't underestimate it um, I'm not trying to be disparaging towards Asian bat makers and you know I've got plenty of Asian made bats and they are fantastic but I'm having to be very picky and very selective uh, my process right at the moment for when I'm going through the Asian bats are uh, first round ping check second round uh, handle sort of shaping check um, I prefer that oval shape width I can't really do a whole lot about especially um, when it drops below 106 I know uh, Indian retailers have told me 105 to 107 is normal 105 isn't really normal for me even 106 is not really but it is something I'm willing to it's something that I know is pretty standard that seems to be happening uh, for bats coming from Asia um, but ideally for me 107 is my starting point uh, I don't like to see narrowing at the back of the bat, but I'm not somebody who is focused on um, achieving 40 mil on the edges. I know it's something that I report about a lot, um, but that's because, you know, that's that's reviewing and, and people are always chasing big bats there. And it's a number that they want to uh, want to know whether or not the bat's achieving that. Um, but for me, I don't think I hit the ball any further just because it's got a 40 mil edge. I'll hit the ball further if it's been pressed properly. Uh, and that's sort of a, more, a much more important measure than whether I've hit the maximum legal specs there. But the width of the bat, yes, I think that's very important. Um, I'm trying to give myself the maximum chance that I'm going to make contact with it and not nicking off. Uh, so that's it. You've heard my rant about it. Uh, I'll probably from time to time mention it in my bat reviews, but because I've done this video now, hopefully I won't need to discuss bat narrowing in such um, lengthy detail. So thanks for listening to this and watching the video. Uh, my apologies uh, if you think I've just been waffling on for ages, but I do think it's something that's really important um, that, you know, if you've got a ruler... Um, measure the width of your bat or if you've got digital calipers even better um, I'm not saying you should be harassing every single retailer saying what's the width what's the width all the time um, uh, but I do think um, it should weigh in your decision making process um, there is a certain amount of give and take um, but I think um, you know you have to you have to be realist, realistic, um, but I think bat makers should also um, be uh, not not so ridiculous to take bats down to such stupid um, widths um, and try to make them more reasonable. As I say, I think something around 106 is not acceptable, but as a starting point, uh, especially if it hasn't got a scuff sheet and edge tape yet, then once those come on, then the bat is wider. Um, but in terms of actual wood on the bat, it's not really. Um, so yeah, for me, 107 and up, ideally. Um, I'll keep looking and checking with bats. 
Um, it does make me then super picky about what bats I take to review and keep. Um, but yeah, thanks for uh, watching this review. Apologies for it being super long, like all my other videos are. Um, yeah, post a comment or um, any questions that you have, and I'll try my best to answer them. And uh, yeah, look out for the reviews that I have coming up, because uh, quite a few of them are Asian-made uh, bats. So um, yeah, that'll be interesting. Anyway, take care, guys.